I was on two combat deployments. I was in the invasion and then uh, OAF-2. And well, end of OAF-2 and, and beginning of OAF-3. I mean, even with my family, they said, you know, I was a different person. And I knew I was, but I was more upset that I um, was different and couldn't go back. I was, you know, pretty sure I was going to die, you know. And there was a lot of times where I just wanted to give up. But for some reason, um, it just healed me. And yeah. Carry me home when the light in my eyes does fade. Fly fishing, you know, the, the peace and like, it just gave me a place to heal, you know, and to actually come home, to like actually be home. Fishing, just fishing in general, has been part of my life ever since I was a little kid. I, my, my first memory fishing was sitting on the dock at my grandparents' cottage on Goose Creek that flowed into Lake Chautauqua in New York. And uh, I was probably maybe three or four, and I remember seeing the bobber go up and down, and, and I got so excited, I just, I didn't know what to do. I, I got up and I ran up to the porch, you know, 15 feet away, and I was like, there's a fish, there's a fish, and they're like, my grandfather said, we'll, we'll reel it in. And I was like, okay. And so I ran over and reeled it in and, and that was it. I mean, like from then on, like th there was just something that happened inside me, you know, like it just consumed me. It built and built and built. You know, I was, I was living in State College, Pennsylvania, uh, and I was irritated with my bar job. You know, opened up the classifieds. This is, you know, back when people use the classifieds to find a job. And uh, one of the first things I saw was house staff, Orvis endorsed fly fishing lodge in Montana. I'd never even been to Montana. And uh, so I bought a van for like $800, crossed my fingers and started, you know, the 30 hour drive west. I couldn't, you know, believe it when I, uh, you know, pulled into Paradise Valley and there's just, you know, these massive mountains. There was still snow all over them and everything and, you know, there it began. When you have a gathering of fly fishing, fly fisher people, it's all walks of life, you know, and you know, when I do these schools, all of those different walks of life come together. Um, uh, the school that we're doing right now, we have a couple. We have a, a retired aerospace engineer. We've got a couple of uh, Iraqi and Afghanistan vets. We have a pediatric doctor, you know? We've got me. So, seeing all these people come together and then the conversations that happen are conversations that normally wouldn't happen in, in regular everyday life. You know, Mike, I'm probably not gonna meet him in a bar. You know, I'm probably not gonna meet him at my daughter's school. You know, this is where I meet him. I meet him on the river. You know, we worked so hard. Uh, and I, you know, there were days I would go to work at 5 and go home at 11 and I, and I never had time for anything but you know, the family life a little bit I had and in, in, in my uh, work and you know it was just not life and uh, so I hung it up and and became a fly fisher. Fly bum. And it becomes not about catching the fish, it becomes about getting involved with the fish, knowing how it all works. Catching just proves you're learning it. They're all How can you beat it? I mean, I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing at this stage of my life. You know, everybody's pretty much strangers when they show up here. And, you know, the first night people are, you know, cordial and there's fishing stories and, you know, 
can start to see the different personalities of people. But by you know, the second night and the third night, you know, around the dinner table, around the fly tying vices, you see relationships start to form. Our second date, I think it was, we went to Colorado and decided to save money on skiing, so we went and hired a fishing guy instead. $400 fishing guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were on the ice as well, so that was, the guide said I was earning some brownie points on that trip. You know, you see Brad Pitt on a river runs through <laughs> it, and you think that's exactly what fly fishing is gonna be, and it, it's, it's not. We've had our fights on the river, but I think we've really formed a solid, you know, more secure connection as well because we're out there together, we're struggling through things, we're teaching, learning, you know, you get that together and it's just, it's awesome to be able to have a fishing partner as your best friend and, and to do it together, it's fun. Yeah, they always say don't teach your wife how to golf <laughs> and um, it's not been like that for us. With me just starting a year and a half ago, I was intimidated, didn't know what I was doing, but I've been very fortunate that all of our friends, everybody we go with, any trip we've been on, the camaraderie that you have. Yeah, you're on girl. a drift boat with you know yeah. two other people for a couple hours. You're getting to know yeah. about their life and their family, job. and you really get to see people's personality and and uh, who they are. And it's it's just fun to be around these people, and you form I think lifelong bonds over trips like this. Fly fishing for trout is probably I think the most cerebral you know, type of fishing that there is. When you approach the piece of water that you're looking for, you're 10 to 15 feet off the bank, creeping, getting closer, tie that fly on that you think's gonna work. Sometimes it does, sometimes not. Tie, you know, tie on another fly. Cast that out there, you know. Watching how the fish act, you know. And there's this progression that you go through Nothing, nothing's, nothing sloppy there. Hey, oh. There's, there's just something that's therapeutic about fly fishing and having the opportunities to be in places like this, being um, with like-minded people who, who appreciate this beautiful country. My father-in-law bought me a reel before I moved from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Boise, Idaho. Didn't have a clue what I was doing, what tip it was, anything like that. And it's just become you know, a way to escape um, everyday life and cheaper than therapy. There's you know, an array of wonderful fly fishing opportunities around here. Everything from big rivers that you float to still Spring Creek. You know, that's why we live out west, is to be in big, beautiful country. I will say that the, the fishing in Montana, there's just something special about it. Um, whether it's the scenery, um, whether it's the, the wildness of the fish. You know, Montana is the only state that it's actually illegal to stalk a stream. The fish are wild. You know, they're born in the gravel, you know? They don't come from a raceway where they're, they're hand-fed and, and, you know, helped along and nurtured. I mean, these fish are fighters, you know? Like, you know, it's, it's like Jake and Danny in there. I mean, like, those guys are survivors and fighters, and, and that's what the trout in Montana are like. Carry me home when the light in my eyes does fade. Carry me home when the shadow comes to take me away. When I got out, you know, I struggled 
pretty pretty bad. Um, you know, I was suicidal and um, isolated and self-medicated. And um, my brother took me out one time, and you know, we fished all day, and and it brought me back to our childhood. You know, where we didn't care about anything. Our grandpa would take us up, drop us off on the creek, and he would go down to the swimming hole and sit there and drink beer while we would wade down the creek catching brook trout and rainbow trout. And that's where it brought me back. Slowly, over time, it's just evolved me into someone that's happy, you know, to be alive and, and thankful and like, I, like I'm home again, you know, I belong again. Now I just, I don't look back. I just want to help as many guys as I can and, and keep pushing forward. And you can tell, you know, when people are struggling and they, you know, they're kind of guarded and, and then you get them out there, out on the river or whatever, and they open up a little bit. And if they want to talk about stuff, they can. If not, you know, we just stay quiet and fish. And it just, you know, it's, it's kind of the same process like that I went through. I get to watch it through them. It, uh, it's rewarding to me just to be able to do that. I struggled for a long time trying to adjust to the civilian life. And um, I got in, into drugs to cope with the stuff that I was going through and, you know, PTSD and all that stuff. I can say that fly fishing probably saved my life because that is my therapy for me. Every time I step into that river, it feels like I'm back, like I'm back home. Oh, and then it's just gone. I mean, we might not have experienced the exact same stuff, but we've all been, you know, in the military and we can relate to each other, you know. And like with fly fishing, like coming here and meeting complete strangers, you know, and after a couple of days you bond, it's it's kind of having that same kind of bond. You might have only known them a few days, but you all share a same common love or passion for something that bonds you together. And that aspect of it is a huge part that helps helped me and and helps others because we're we're still searching for that and finding that is hard to be able to find that again you know or is uh it's what saved my life you know being in the industry for 20 years now and and, and guiding for this long it's a lot more important than than i ever really understood it gives people you know, something to focus on that have you know gone through some things that uh, weigh on their mind heavily. Um, you know, seeing the healing, seeing how I can help people ease their minds, put smiles on their face, that's, that's what fly fishing is to me now. I still like catching big fish. Yeah.